Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dove Dog and I are going to see if we can't finally fix the transmission leak on my 1971 Ford F1 Hondo. So here's the deal. We didn't fix the seal. We're a poet, we didn't even know it. We got to park on some concrete right here. That's rain. We got a storm of ruin. And that's transfusion fluid. Never mind that, Greta. We're gonna take care of it. How dare you! Also, we swapped some new tires on it. We got some 33 by 1250 general grabbers. Let's look at what else we got for the old orange pickup. We got some 33 by 1250 15 general grabbers. X3s and the Bib Bandit had some of these 15 by 8 Ford Steelys, but a couple of them appear to be bent. We spun them on the wheel balancer. We got five of them, so we got to try to make two that aren't super bent. Should we see what we can do, Duff? Yeah, this thing's gonna make her look real good. I'm not sure about the cream color, but I'm gonna mount them up and see how they look. We can always dismount them and get them blasted and painted that argent color, silver, gray, whatever you want to call it. But the pickup originally had white wheels on it, so they might not look bad. But we'll see how they look. If we got to dismount them and paint them up, we can do that later. So let's see if we can't get one straight enough for the rear at least, huh, Duff? Okay. See how that one teeters on the ground? You know it's bent. The outside rim is, outside hoop is bent too. They hit something pretty hard. Is it bent right here too? Yeah, she's pretty wobbly. Oh man, I don't think there's any repairage we can do to that one. If you guys know how to straighten rims at home, let me know. The other thing is I don't want to beat on them on my balancer here. It's probably not good for the balancer. That one's pretty good. This one isn't near as bad right here, so I think we'll be able to set this on a board and tap it down and get that straight. And that probably wouldn't even affect the balance, but we're going to straighten it anyway. So I think we can salvage that one. And the other one's just going to be a wall hanger or a spare to just maybe limp you home or I don't know. Should probably find a new hoop for it. That would be cool. If anybody knows where you get a 15 by 8 inch hoop with a 13 inch inside diameter, that would be great. Just a little bit of deflection in there. Gonna be good enough. We'll maybe put R for rear on this one. It's gonna be good enough for this pickup. It's old, these 33s never balance out that great. In my luck, they got these huge gaps in the treads. First chunk of rock or mud you get in there, it throws them way off anyway, so. Probably don't even need to balance them. We should get fancy and put those air pellet BB things inside. Balance beads, put those in there, but they cost real money, so good enough. I'm just gonna double check the last two. I think they were okay. We're gonna put some new valve stems on these things. And mount them up. We'll take it. I'm gonna label that other one bent so nobody gets screwed over like the Bib Bandit and I did on it. He bought him at a swap meet, he said, out in Rapid City. So, he didn't know. I like these cute little short guys. They're not obnoxious and stick out and get torn off when you rub up against the curb. They're not very good if you got beauty rings, but we don't have beauty rings yet. Do these things come with factory beauty rings? Any of these Ford pickups? I don't know. Like I said, these are probably gonna end up 
getting painted anyway. Put a little bit of our BD's Wiener Schleider on there. Lube them up real good. Rubber and lube go well together, kids. So usually there's a red dot or a yellow dot or both and you want to line up that red dot with the Velsim. These ones don't have that. We don't have to worry about lining that up. We're not getting our bead to seal, so I'm going to let this relax and we'll break the bead again and we'll maybe put some more Wiener Schleider in there and lube that rubber up real good, kids. Try to get that seed. It's seeded from about here to here. And we're at 45 PSI. What's the max on this thing? I don't want to get too crazy. Made in South Africa. Hmm. It's an SA tire. 35 PSI. We already got too much in there. Max inflation pressure, 35 PSI. Here we got it good and lube up. Let's try her again. There we got her. Now I'm gonna pump it up to pressure, and then we're gonna let it relax. And usually that helps with the balance. I saw it on Finnegan's garage. And it actually works, especially with these bigger tires. So you get it seated, you run it all the way up to pressure, and then you let it relax, and then you pump it up again. Since they kind of take a shape from being stored on a shelf and never being on a rim, that's what they say. It works. We'll check the backside, make sure that that bead's seated. Oh, these are heavy. Sure looks like it did. I'm gonna pump her up to 35 PSI. Probably not try to balance it. There you have it. Just got three more to do. And there you have it. Five ounces on the inside and two and a half on the outside. Definitely not gonna put weights on this thing. It'll be fine. Oh, we gotta get these ugly Bronco wheels off this thing, don't we, Duff? We did clean up these wheels a little bit. Just grab a little bit of soapy water. Just kidding, we didn't even use any soapy water. We just rinsed them off and wiped them down a bit. They don't look too bad. I think if we had some beauty rings, it'd really clean them up. Because I think they had some beauty rings on it. One other time? I don't know. Where do you find some beauty rings? This this Bronco had a couple on it, but they are, they are pitted bad. And then after that, you just drop in, just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted. They would clean up for a little while, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life cleaning those things up. You Duff? No. Let's get these old 33s on here. And get these 30.5s off. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Do it. Then we'll go for a ride. Just kidding, the tranny and this thing pukes. Like mad still. I don't know, Duff. This thing looks like a freaking monster truck now. I'm not, I'm not really digging the white. The tires look good, but I think, I think we gotta go back to that gray. And I'm kind of wondering if these things are gonna rub. It looks like this is the tightest spot up here, and I refuse to cut up the body on this pickup. But holy frick, did that change the look of this thing up? Guys, don't, don't let the women fool you. Two inches is a big difference. I don't know if we're gonna be able to run these. We'll we'll try driving it. First time it catches on that trim or on the fender. We either gotta lift it or we gotta go back to 31s or maybe a 32. And then they they stick out a ways. These things are gonna hum some rocks. So I don't know what to do here. What do you think of the white? It's it's taller now, Duff. You can walk right under it, no problem. Now it almost sits like 
looks like it's got too much of a rake. Maybe if we put some different springs in the front and brought it up just a hair and got it levelish, we could try that, I guess. We could, we could see what they offer for a spring. What's back there? So we could put a little bit of a block in the back if we had to, if the springs weren't quite right. But I don't know, Duff. I do not know. But we got the hubcaps. This thing was a two wheel drive. I took the original hubcaps, took a whole side of the center and made them into four wheel drive hubcaps. Hubcaps are insane right now. You go on eBay and like, you gotta spend 200 bucks for a pair of decent hubcaps. So I found some Ford LTD hubcaps because the hubcaps off of this are now on the Bronco, which I'll steal them off of that and put on here. But we gotta have something on the Bronco. So the cheapest dog dish hubcaps I could find that were Ford were these LTD hubcaps. I don't remember what I paid, 40 or 60 bucks shipped. But I figured these are the two good ones and they're, they're pretty hailed out. But these are the two worst ones. And you could spend an afternoon knocking dents out and polish them and they'd probably come out okay but i say we cut out the centers of these two of the worst ones and those will end up on the bronco because i think that bronco came with like a full 15 inch hubcap Ugh, are those hideous oh all that work and these are the wrong diameter hubcap guess we're stealing them off the bronco Tech tip of the day, always check to see what diameter your wheels are and that they match your hubcaps. The more you know. All right, grab the ones off the Bronco and see if they fit. Oh yeah. Way more good or duffer. Well, we dug some beauty rings out of our stash. They're off of eight inch Chevy rallies. There ain't a whole lot of rim left showing with that. I don't know what to think of them. I think maybe a little bit thinner beauty ring would be all right. But yeah, it really hides the white wheel once you put that in there. And they don't fit that great. They're designed for a little bit different style rim, I guess. So I'll have to see if I can find maybe a little bit thinner one. I don't know. I kind of like it without them though, to be honest. I think I'm gonna go back to the gray wheels and just hubcaps. We'll see. It's fun how much you can change on a vehicle just by Wheels, tires, and hubcaps. You can do a lot of playing around. Yeah, wheels and tires and stance makes or breaks a vehicle in my opinion. Like this could just be another crappy pickup sitting in the weeds, but those wheels and tires and stance makes it a whole different rig in my opinion. Thanks to one of you special fans. No, we paid for him. He just works for Continental and helps some of the discount. So shout out to you. I can't think of your name right now, but anyway, we got a storm of brewing. So, we're gonna get this thing inside. I hope it starts. It hasn't run in two or three months, at least two. So hopefully the battery isn't dead. So let's let's get this thing a roll. Well, we got a dome light, so that's a plus. Does it crank? Oh my gosh. No lie. I haven't started this thing in at least a month and a half, probably two or three months. Because it leaks so bad. There'll probably be a trail in the shop if we let it warm up too long. So let's get this thing on the hoist and see where the issue is. I'll show you where the issue is, but I'm pretty sure I know where it's at. There ain't nothing left, and you know what's not the fun part of it. We got her inside before the storm, so that's good. But, I mean, is there really a storm? That's the job I want. You know, a weather people. 60... 9 to 72 Chevy pickup? Maybe GMC. Pretty sure it's a Chevy. He's got a hood on it now. He's driving by without a hood. Maybe that's the other one. Anyway. Yeah, it's a full house in here. We got that and that. Das Broncos over there. Uni. Casper. 56 something or other and a 63 something or other and a 28 something or other Roadster and a F1 and the King. And you know, if I was a little bit more organized, we could probably get at least two more in probably three but when you got big stuff like that and that and pretty much everything but the bronco is big in here let's get this thing up in the air and i'm going to show you guys what i found out i really want to drive this thing to see if these tires are going to clear because i took the tires off of this and we put on the bronco and i know these aren't going to fit on the bronco so i need to know if we got to put a lift in this thing or if we got to do some cutting or if we got to put different tires on it i really don't want to put a lift on it so Less yakking. Let's get the hood open, battery cable unhooked, just, you know, for safety purposes. Plus you get more light down if you get the hood open. Tech tip of the day, open the hood. 
lets more light underneath. Ooh, maybe we'll do a pressure wash video. Look at all that slime. Never mind. That's that's not coming off my hand. That's see how shiny it is right there. Yeah, you can't see it, but it's there. See, it's good. It's got all this tree sappy crap on it. You can see my pressure washing marks. I'm no expert. Pressure washer like that. Pudding feller down in Okehoma. Why does it look nice out? You can see how the wind switch, it wrapped my have a nice day flag right around my pole, it switched so fast. That's no bueno. All right, I have had this thing on a lift before, but never my own lift. So let's take a look at this thing. I did not put that orange obnoxious steering shock on there. Was well, not me. I did pressure wash this thing when it was a bare frame before I swapped it. But she's a little greasy. This engine has always had just different Various leaks, like now it looks like the fuel pump is leaking oil. I had the oil pan off and did a rear main seal once. You know, I've had the transmission apart once now, but guess what's leaking? Oh, that rear main seal looks like it's leaking again too. Son of a biscuit. It's got an exhaust leak. Uh, I think it's right there. You can see how sooty it is. Awesome. Also, the valve cover looks like it's leaking again. But it's the front seal on the transmission. You can pretty much just see it running out of there. That or it's the torque converter. You know, torque converters don't ever leak. It would be my luck that it would. So we're just, we're gonna replace the whole shebang. Torque converter was kind of expensive, but I'm sick of leaks and I'm not gonna pull that transmission out one more time to find out that uh, it's torque converter. The torque converter was only like three tanks of gas. So, I mean, it was expensive, but Today's day and age, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I'm sick of leaks and I can't drive it. It leaks so profusely. Also, we need to drop the pan and put the right pickup for the filter. Somebody pointed out that they're different between four wheel drive and two wheel drive. Well done, Ford. You know, we can't just use the same pickup and the same pan. Whatevs. What else is leaking? Transfer case, are you leaking too? Maybe front output? I don't know. We know it needs drive shafts because the yokes are wasted. I think the front one's better than the rear, but the, uh, oh yeah. You can see how much she moves right there. So those both need to go to a shop and get rebuilt. Also, we need to make a fuel tank so we don't have to use that one in the bed. And it needs some cab corners, but you don't see those from the outside. This thing and I could just cut that whole thing off, weld it shut and put a tank right there. You can see where I spliced the frame right there. Uh, I did put a new tailpipe on it. Put a new axle breather tube because I'm a Nazi about those things. Can we even say Nazi or does that upset people? Who knows? Also, speaking of upset people, uh, the weatherman's boss, weather person's boss should should be mad at them because it's glorious outside right now, huh, Duff? It did drop about 15 degrees, which is much appreciated. Oh yeah, the wind is out of the north now. Well, yep, yep, definitely out of the north. What else to see under here? I don't know. Looks good. Other than the transfusion leak, and, and we should probably should tie up this uh, breather hose that's just hanging on for dear life, held in by hopes and dreams, maybe? I don't know. Okay, I guess we're gonna pull some drive shafts and shift linkage for the transfer case and speedo cable. I think we can get this cross member out. We freaking better. Oh, it goes up the bolts to the top. Those bolts are gonna be real freaking fun to get out. Well done, Ford. I don't know if we'll be able to sneak it by the exhaust without dropping that down. Of course, that side's leaking too. So it'd probably be a good time to take that exhaust apart and uh, put some new donuts in there. Yay. Yay! Oh, looks like whoever put that yoke in did it backwards so you can't grease it. Yoke. Universal joint. It was probably me. Awesome. I'm known for doing stuff wrong. We got shift linkage up here. I don't know if there's any wiring. Is there like a neutral safety or reverse light on these Fords? Oh, tranny cooler lines and vacuum line, the dipstick jimmy, all the good stuff. Okay, commence tear down. Guess what I did, Duff? Yeah. I let one of the uh, universal joint caps hit the floor. Lost a couple needles. Don't worry, found them. Tech tip of the day, so you don't knock them off again. Take some electrical tape and go 
wrap them up. So here's the other breakthrough we just had. This thing's always had a little bit of a vibration through it. And it's, I don't know, kind of always thought it was just the engine, engine mounts had a mist. I don't know what it is. It vibrated just, just a little bit. I think I figured out what it is. See how that universal joints is cross is vertical and horizontal. Look at this thing. She's off about 45 degrees. And no, I have never had that yoke off that drive shaft. I don't know why I ever would have split the two. So I'm guessing that probably didn't help the splines any. It might be part of the shimmy. So let's fix that quick. Put some tape on some universal joints. Yeah, tech tip of the day. Keep your universal joints in phase and tape up your universal joints. So you don't lose the cap and lose the needles and lose your mind, which is kind of what it looks like when I smile. Like I'm losing my mind. All right, so all we had to do was take that retainer cap doohickey off and slide her off, slide her back on. Probably should grease it. It's pretty dry in there, but the splines are wasted anyway, so too late for that. It looks like it was still the original. What is that? Is it like a liner? Like an anti-vibration blue plastic something or other? Probably some Loctite that Wes would use. Loctite, Loctite 5150, yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's take the front one off. I know that one's wasted too. So, make progress. Oh, hey, I tell you we got a lift and a new shop. Go check out the video on More Mortski Repair. That's the channel, More Mortski Repair. It's, uh, yeah, that's where we do the dumb stuff. We did some pretty dumb stuff this weekend. Check out that video. Uh, most fun you can have with your clothes on. One guy had his shirt off because he was wearing bibs, you know, hillbilly Oklahoma things, but best bang for your buck, Chevy Astro Van. Real good. The rear end may or may not have fallen out and it may or may not have been going 100 miles an hour just before it happened. I mean, 65, that's all the faster you, you can go. Okay, back to work. Well, now that we got our drive shafts out, we're gonna pull our speedo cable out and our transfer case shift linkage, and our transfer case mount hardware, and then our transfer case to transmission hardware. And drop this, I think it's a 205 out of here. Yeah, it's a 205, that's a good one. They also came with 203s, full-time four-wheel drive. 205, part-time, and it's got a gear. I think 203s are gear, I don't know. It's the better one, part-time four-wheel drive. So to get our shift linkage off, we're gonna take this bolt, looks like it's a half-inch bolt, three-quarter head. And there's a little tiny clip on that linkage. We'll pop that out. And then we should be able to get the shift lever off. I don't know if we'll be able to get it through the floor with the uh, handle on it. So we might have to let her down. Oh, the pains of having a hoist. It's better than the back pains of not having one. We're gonna get that out of there. And then these have a mount off to the side. I've never seen that before. Robust, well done Ford. I'm gonna take that off or undo it at least. And then we got, usually there's six bolts around the uh, perimeter here. We gotta take out, bolt into the transmission. So I'm gonna do that and uh, see how it goes. Not much room in there to show you what I'm doing. So I figured I'd tell you ahead of time. And the old Cyclops is about ready to die. I'm sure it'll die right as I'm trying to get that pin out. I think we're about ready to pull her out. You can see we got a little fluid dripping down there because we split the seam between the transmission and the transfer case. So we got all them bolts out. The one's up top, way up there, a little tricky. Gonna do some extensions and weeble wobblies to get her out of there. I think we'll maybe pressure wash this up, you know, cause you guys love pressure washing while we got it out. Got that mount bolt out. We still got these four under here. I think we're gonna wait until uh, Mojo gets back to pull those out. We'll make it a lot easier with two people. So here's the deal with Mojo. He worked for my aunt and uncle who ran this place. He's 74, he's got a background in mechanics and he's a truck driver. He's just kind of just a jack of all trades. He really likes working on trailers. I don't know if he really likes it, but that's what we've had him doing. So he just is working on the brakes on this trailer. He got all the lights done up. He's gonna do a little welding on the ramp. Uh, you put an equalizer on the other side, we're gonna put an equalizer, we're gonna do all the equalizers. He's running to town now, and he's gonna see if we can find a seal, cause the seal was leaking. He's weeping a little bit inside the brake drum. And we're gonna put a new dust cap on there while we're at it. 
He brings his cute little red toolbox with him wherever he goes. Just, just a good dude. That's the deal with Mojo. He came with the shop. And so yeah, if you hear some noise in the background, him tinkering, that's, that's just Mojo working away while I'm working away. So sorry about the noise. We got a lapel mic we're trying to work on and we're, hopefully as we get some stuff in here, the echo will go away. seems like it's better when I'm right by the camera as opposed to being away from the camera, but hey, we're working on it. So thanks for struggling through this with us. Uh, speaking of struggle, no, there's no mini Mortski coming around. That pudding's just plain jokes. It's just me and Duff and Mojo sometimes when he wants to come to work because he's 74 years old so he doesn't have to be here all the time but yeah no kids enough with the congratulations it's even more annoying than the uh do you get a new shop it's even more annoying so thanks for that pudding much appreciated all right i'm gonna get those mounts loose and then hopefully mojo shows up and we'll sneak that thing out of here if not i'm just gonna struggle through it myself with the transmission jack which is pretty sweet uh what is it it came from northern hydraulic northern tool northern tool what is this thing? It's a strong way, thousand pound capacity. So my dad's got a lift and what did we do a transmission in? Oh, well, we did a transfer case in his Suburban a couple of times. He wore through the case and he patched it and then he wore through the case again. So then he put a whole new case on it with like an 05 Suburban. They wear through the, uh, I think they're magnesium. So then he put a new case half on it and a case saver. And he bought it for that and used it once. So I asked him if I could take this thing. And not bring it back. If you need it, Dad, you can you can come get it. Otherwise, I'm I'm just gonna keep it. It's gonna be real handy. Okay, I'm gonna pull some mounts out. You know what I'm doing. I don't. Well, I think that mount's the only thing holding it. Let's get Bad Bob in here and see if we can work her out of there. Oh, there it went. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? We're catching some of it. We're trying. I'm new. I don't know what to do. I'm new. I'm new. I don't know what to do. All right. I'm just, I just wanted to fall onto the jack. Not my toe. Or my face. Because I'm sure somebody's screaming at me right now. Well, you got all the way to the engine and transmission hanging on it. No, I don't. You got this stand on the oil pan. You gotta have a pair of these, and you gotta have a jack, and you gotta have a drain pan. You gotta have all kinds of stuff when you get a hoist. These things are, they're expensive. They're like a college degree. They're worth it. No offense if you don't have a college degree. And you don't have to go to college. I'm just saying. I like my stuff that goes with the hoist. Okay, sorry, I probably just offended everyone. It's okay. Here's here's a little personal hand hug for Mortsky. Nothing can stop the ah! All right, let's keep let's keep them moving, kids. Ow! Oh, this this pan is really difficult. <laughs> Put a chain on this thing so that way I can't just take it on its own. We hosed up, kids. We uh, definitely split the transmission and transfer case in the wrong spot. We took the extension housing off that goes between the transmission and the transfer case. I thought it stayed with the transfer case. I mean, it it, it can, but uh, we got a debacle on our hands now, so we still gotta figure out how to get it on the ground and then figure out what we do from there. I think we can just put it back together and reseal it. Hopefully nothing internal to the transfusion come to depart, but. We won't do that again. You learn from your mistakes. I should be one smart SOB. We should make a shirt out of that. And apparently a lawnmower man shirt and Mortsky blah shirt and things Mortsky hates shirt. Yeah, yeah, 
we're gonna have a whole line of shirts one day once we figure out somebody to make all these shirts for us because we don't have time to do it ain't nobody got time for that ain't nobody got time for that so i don't know what's keeping from going apart Off of there. I think. Well, it's out of there, but we kind of hosed up a bit. See how you can see the internals of the transmission there? We should just see the output shaft. It's because this piece right here, well, what is it about seven inches long? That's the extension housing that meets, you know, basically you take your regular two wheel drive extension housing off, put this in there, and it adapts it from that C6. To the 205 and instead of taking these bolts off one two three four five six i should have taken those six off that go to the transfer case that's how i usually do it but because i don't speak ford of this vintage anyway i screwed it up the gasket looks in good enough shape we probably could just tighten it up but i think we'll scrape it and we'll put some right stuff on there it should be real good provided we have to ever take it off again because right stuff is right there forever i mean the right thing to do would be to get a gasket for it, but no way we'd get one in time to get this together for the wrapping the video for the end of the week. So that's what we're gonna do. So we can get this on the ground, get it split, get it cleaned up. We still gotta pull that transmission out. Before we can do that, we gotta take this cross member dealio out because that's gonna be in the way. Probably should just pull the pan right off the bat. That way all that oil is drained and we're not wrestling it later. So that's what we'll do. So tipping that transfer case on its side, we obviously lost a little more uh, 80, 90. Probably be a good time to drain that out, especially after we pressure wash it and get some more water in there. But I figured, yeah, let's pull that pan off and you guys can watch me get covered in ATF. It'll be easier to get at these back bolts this time because we don't have a transfer case in the way. Those things were a real bugger. Ooh, bugger. Getting at the uh, last time around. All right, look forward to getting ATF all the way down to my armpits. Of course the battery died as we were dropping the pan down. That's just the life of trying to film stuff on YouTube. Anywho, I was going to clean it up with this shop rag here. What does this thing say? By burning, hold on. Burning Spears. Anyway, Burning Spears Surfing Australia. So I went to Australia in the summer of 2003, right after I graduated the uh, School of High, to play football over there in the uh, Down Under Bowl. The Down Under Bowl with the North Dakota, there's a couple of Minnesota guys on their team. Anyway, Bringing back memories of this. I know there's a few guys in Australia and uh, New Zealand that watch this stuff, so. Anywho, we're gonna make a shop rag out of it now. It's 19 years old. I'm guessing I don't fit in it anymore. Or do you wanna see me fit in it? Was I still a large back then? Probably, I was just a little guy. He just a little guy. I think it was 167 pounds is is when I graduated. Oh yeah, she's a large. Made in India. It's now a shop rag, but that was a good shirt, good shirt. It was a shop rag before this, it looks like. Okay, enough yakking. I think what we're gonna do, oh yeah. So when I was pulling out the parts for that kit, I got a front seal that seals the actual pump housing of the transmission. And then we also got, we're gonna put a little drain plug in the drain pan, weld that son of a biscuit in there. So we never have to drain it again, because once we put that plug in there, then we can drain it without having to make a mess like we just did, so. Pretty excited about that, even though we're never gonna have to use it again, right? Right. Get the good stuff. Napa Todd got us the wrong stuff last time. Oh yeah, it's, is it this piece? That was, I don't remember what it is. We'll figure it out in a minute. So I figure we should get that pan on before we set it on the transmission jack, because the jack, the pan sits on the, anyway, we gotta get this pan on there. So this Dorman 
plug 65128. Says we gotta drill a half inch hole. So I'm gonna clean this up and you wanna make sure you put it in a spot where it doesn't have a filter or something running into it. So we're gonna drill it over in the corner here. That way we got easy access. Anyway, I'm gonna go clean this up in the uh, parts washer. First, we're gonna take our Super Scraper SS1 with the carbide tip. Somebody said I didn't mention that. They were super excited when they got it. It's got this carbide tip. Lifetime warranty, they pretty much last forever anyway. This one's been used and abused for about 10 years. We're gonna clean this up with that. Hit us up if you need one of these. Mortsky repair at gmail.com. All right, the old SS1 made quick work of that. Look at how black and nasty this got. And just the uh, couple hundred miles we drove it. Yeah, that tranny's got some miles on it. I'm gonna clean her up. So we're supposed to just tighten this bolt in place, use these plastic washers to seal it, but we're gonna weld it in place. That way it ain't gonna leak. All right, our pan of not hot bars is cooled off. I got our nut in there with our plastic washer. And I got our uh, new O-ring. Put about that in there and tighten it up, fill it up with some Stanisol. See if it leaks, because that's the right thing to do. It's M for 400, oh, they're not 400 M's. They're 351 modifieds, but a 400 is not an M motor. It upsets the Ford guys. Boy, is this a cheesy plug. I wish I would have. You know what, we're gonna put some pipe dope on it first. I just, why couldn't it have been just a regular pipe plug? Just having this silly O-ring. Okay, we got pipe dope, we got a washer that I reamed out to the absolute perfect size, and a new O-ring, and now she's gonna seal moderately better. I wish I would had a pipe plug or O-ring boss or something good, but that's what you get from the help section. I'm just gonna get her snug, not overly tight. I think we're ready to put our pan back on. We got our low profile filter replaced with our high profile filter with our adapter tube, because don't put a two wheel drive filter on a four wheel drive, even though they fit. Well done, Ford. So we're gonna stick the pan on, then we gotta get the cross member out, and, and then everything else, you know. It's been one of them days where you want to get transmission fluid all over your hands just to top it all off. Can't wait. It should be fun. Oh, the disappointments keep rolling. I fought to get these bolts out of the top of this cross member because there's no room between the uh, floor and the frame. Finally got them out of there after sticking a pry bar in there and getting a ratcheting wrench. And then there's two more down here on this, I don't know, trailing arm support. Now I can't get that out of there. So I think we're just going to try to see if we can't drop the transmission out the front side. I'm really not sure what else to do. Short of getting some uh, pry bars in here. I'm prying that out so that we can get this out because it tapers down. So as this comes down, it gets wider. So I don't know. And we can't just knock it out this way because you can't get the bolts out because there's not enough room between the uh, floor and the frame to get them out. So I mean, in order to knock it this way or that way, you'd have to lift the cab up. Ah, just, I don't know, Ford. Missed opportunity here. All right, I'm calling it, uh, calling it an evening. We do some Google boxing on the phone, see what I can come up with, but I don't know what to do. Freaking A. We just can't win today. Gosh, another rhyme and I didn't even know it. I'll be that pudding fella in no time. All right, we're back at her again today. This transmission cross member just does not come out of there. Read a bunch of forms on the internet. Some guys say you can sneak it down, other guys say you can't, but they all say it's a real pain to sneak it back up in there. But they all take this out. Some guys have body lifts, so at least they can get the hardware out. And other people say to unbolt this torsion bar. Is that what it's called? Torsion bar? No, trailing arm. So I got that unbolted, but we were lifting on it, so we had to set the body down, or the whole thing down. Now we're lifting on the body mount. So we can spread these out a bit. I don't know if we can just get away with getting that side loose because the whole thing tapers and it touches the frame rail right there. I don't know, come on Ford. Can't you just bolt at the bottom of the cross member like GM does? So we're gonna take this side loose and that'll give us another eighth inch, but even the Ford guys concur that these things are a real treat. So let's dig into this.
one bowl right here that you can't get on with an impact. I think we're gonna put a brace under that because I don't know if when we pull this loose, the whole front end's gonna wanna do the old G-body shuffle on us. There's definitely some tension on it. Now would be a good time to replace those rubbers. Oh, everything just kind of slid back on us. That whole front axle is definitely loose. So they make them just wide enough so you can't spin it sideways, apparently. So we're gonna take this cross member, that cross member bracket out, and we're gonna slide the whole dang thing back a little bit further just so it's all out of the way. These silly Fords got a 3 8 bolt with a half inch head, or a 5 16 bolt with a 3 8 head on it. So we got a half on one side and a nine on the other. Well done, Ford. Now let's see if that son of a biscuit slides out. Or back far enough anyway. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Well, now we just gotta do uh, torque converter, bell housing bolts. Of course, you gotta take the starter off. Yeah, fun stuff. Get that starter pulled off. Now we got the engine turnover. We just gotta pull out. I think there's four torque converter bolts. There's one there. You can see that one popping through there. And then we do bell housing bolts. So in order to turn it over, Ford doesn't have a good spot to access it. So we got our big old gear wrench, 84 tooth, half inch drive flex head, cranking over the front of the engine. This is gonna be a blast. Said nobody oh. ever. So we got them all out. The thing about these torque converter bolts on Fords is they got a stud instead of a bolt. So you gotta line all that up as you're putting everything together and I think that's just an absolute silly design. So that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, onto the bell housing bolts. Also, we pulled, I think this is the neutral safety switch or reverse lights. We got that unhooked and our shift linkage unhooked and our kick down unhooked and all that. Transfer case stuff is just Hanging there all floppy like. So yeah. Hopefully the dipstick don't get in the way. Oh, we gotta do the tranny cooler line. Son of a biscuit. And we're getting there. Right, Duff? You just hang out underneath that dodge. With that wire hitting you right in the eyeball. Oh, you want some pets? Oh, I suppose. I got time for that. I think she's ready to pull the key with those bell housing bolts. Get yourself an extension. That's the length of the transmission. Then you can just get them from the back side, if you know what I mean. All right, let's drop this thing down. Hopefully. Well, here it is, the old bulky C6. Let's take a look at her. Yeah, she's a little greasy. I'm guessing I pressure washed this all off when I had the frame before I set the body on it, but who knows, maybe not. Let's get that torque converter off and see what it looks like in there. So you can see everything's drier on the torque converter. So unfortunately, the torque converter is not leaking. Well, that might have saved us some money if we can send that one back. I don't know, we've had it for quite a while. It, it looks drier on my new seal, but I think it's leaking around the pump there. It's got to. When we slid this, yeah, you can see that's fresh stuff running down right there from when we slid the torque converter out. So I replaced that when I replaced the engine. And then, yeah, we could maybe snug these up, but let's try to take that pump out of there. See if we can't seal that up and then wash her down and then put it all back together. Right? Right. That's the beauty of manuals. It seems like they never really leak. Well, they do, but front seals don't as often. Anywho, C6AP. I'm not sure there's a build date on here. 7A105. I always wondered if this was a 78 or a 9. I think it's a 79, but who knows. I have no idea how to take that apart, so I'm gonna do a little Google boxing and see so we don't screw it up and springs and balls and everything else go flying everywhere. You don't want your balls flying everywhere. Also, we should probably uh, do something about that. Sorry, Greta. So according to the old YouTube, you just gotta take these perimeter bolts out. You slide the shaft out, give her a couple of whaps to knock it loose. 
pump slides out. And there's just a o-ring around the outside and a uh, gasket on the back side which we have there's the gasket there's the o-ring it's got that orange stripe so you can tell that it ain't twisted i guess it's not really an o-ring it's a square o-ring they still call them an o-ring also came with the torque converter seal and the torque converter bushing i don't think we're gonna put that in because i don't really see any wear on the torque converter so it should tell us that that bushing is good or that it ain't riding on it so yeah let's see what happens wish us luck and here goes nothing. How hard can it be, right, Dom? Alright, then you just slide this out. Give her a couple of baps. Maybe. Sure enough. Well, I guess it ain't all the way out yet. Yeah, I did notice the guy pried on something inside the transmission through the uh, oil pan. That'd be great, because we just had the pan off. It's gonna be cool if we did it. Oh. oh, well, I guess we got it out. And that's probably where it was leaking. Right around that gasket. Well, anyway, that gasket's torn now. So, let's go put this on the bench. I'm gonna slide this. We're gonna leave that in there, so we don't get it in the wrong way. That would be my luck. Another shameless plug, we're gonna take our SS1 inch and a quarter wide carbide tipped Super Scraper, made in America, lifetime warranty. Hit us up if you need one. Repair at gmail.com. And clean this up. You know what? Oh yeah. I was gonna say, maybe we'll get the SS5 out. This works about right. It's pretty clean, just a couple of spots. Where the gasket stuck to the uh, housing here, otherwise the rest is all on the pump. What are the odds this transmission ever works again after we get done with it? I've never had one of these apart, I don't think. And if I have, it certainly did not go back together. And we're also going to wipe down the uh, perimeter here. I think that O-ring does most of the seal on the gasket. Don't do a ton of it. It's got a nice little lead-in chamfer so we don't tear our O-ring as we're installing it. Well done, Ford. Oh yeah, let's go clean the pump up. Again, we're going to take our SS1 super scraper. Knock that old gasket off. I have no idea what any of this stuff is, so uh, let's not try to screw it up. Now we'll get our O-ring out of there and put a new one in. We're ready to go, I think. We got our seal pick here. Let's... Take the seal out of there. She's oh, a little stiff. Probably not as pliable as it once was. So we got a red line. Put that facing out. Red lines out. White letters in. Well, there you have it. I think we'll put a little grease on that new gasket. We've got to line the holes up. And then that should be ready to go back together. Let's make sure everything lines up. Looks like we got the right gasket. All right, let's put a dab of grease on it. If it stays. Sweet. Let's slide her back in. What are the odds it just slides right back in? <laughs> yeah, not very good, huh? All right, and here we go. Oh crap, let me get it. Oh, those are on the bottom. Let's put some bolts in there to line them up. So there's these, oh, so there's a bolt on the floor now. There's also these drain back holes. We gotta line them up with the drain back holes on the housing. Woohoo! Woohoo! I know nothing about automatic transmissions. I've What's that, the uh, vacuum modulator shift thingers? And a couple of them. Other than that, basically just leaks. So I really have no idea what we're doing here. The seal's not all the way in there, but I suppose it's gotta be a tight fit, so we're gonna have to pull it in with the bolts. I just don't wanna screw anything up. because I don't wanna have to take this apart again. Oh, 
don't like the way that all went together. The seal is, I can still see it, so it ain't all the way in. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> so now we're gonna pull it apart, double check. So what I'm gonna do here is measure the depth of the bore to the mounting surface where that pump face sits and, and see if we're actually getting in there all the way. Looks like she's about seven, seven tenths. What's that? I don't know. Not quite three quarters of an inch. So if I measure the distance of that lip, which is, like I said, seven tenths, when we come over here and measure from that flat surface the o-ring it should just barely cover the o-ring so it's not going in there all the way and really the only thing we got going on here since we can slide that shaft out is how this all mates up i mean that's clearly got to be sliding into whatever we got going on in there don't fall off the bench scooper scrapers work great for wheel shocks too like you said the uh only thing we're doing here is just sliding inside of the drum there. I don't know what it's called. So, I guess uh, we'll uh, play around with it some more. Glad we didn't just crank her down or call it good. Don't want to screw anything up here because I don't have any spare C6 parts around. Maybe I do. I might. All right, so that shaft should turn. This thing's never going to work again. Not a chance. Tech tip of the day. Take your stuff to a professional. I don't know if I can show you, but there's like eight sprags. There, there, there. And there's a drum that it's got to sit into. I think this guy is what's holding us from going all the way up in there. We got to line them sprags up, get that slid in. So it'd be ideal to have this thing like sitting in a 55 gallon drum tipped on end so that we're not fighting gravity. Yeah, I'm guessing that's why these uh, transmission assembler guys have these fancy stands and stuff, vices and whatnot. We don't have any of that. We got a 55 gallon drum around we could use. You want to fetch one up? You're a lot of help. All right, I'll see if I can slide her back together. I'll try her one more time, then we might have to tip it up on end somehow. Somehow. Yeah, if you had something that clamped the bell housing and then tipped her 90 degrees and you sat it in a engine stand, that'd be key. A bench would be nice, but don't slide around when you're pushing on her. I slid this thing in a couple more times and I just can't get it that last little bit, so. I gotta say, uh, 35 gallon drum that we've been storing. Pry bars and such in. The bottom's all wallered out. So it wallers around. So this should be great. Now I gotta try to get this into there by myself without dropping it. And hopefully it fits. Should be great. I'll leave the camera on. It might be entertaining. I'm sure this transmission is uber light. I guess we should start our own, our own company where you just drive your own cars and help people around and sell it. Uber light. Oh, my back hurts just thinking about this. How could this possibly end up poorly? You know, I said I didn't know anything about automatics. Well, you know how I learn? By doing and by screwing up. So, I should be one smart SOB by now. Did a little Google boxing. And we got a little bit deeper in here. We took the 
band adjuster out from the side here. Where's that at? I don't know. It's, it's around here somewhere. Right here. I'm guessing there's some type of proper adjustment for that. Wes will know. And that holds this, or pushes on this wedge. It pushes on, I believe this is the second gear band clamp. And uh, you can see the materials. She's, she's smoked in there, but it worked fine. And this is the high reverse clutch pack assembly. And these are the sprags that aren't lining up with, but I thought, not lining up with those notches down there. So, I don't know, we're just taking things apart. No idea what we're doing. And then also on the back side of this, I'm guessing these four doohickeys, notches, got to line up with these four. No, they don't. They don't. Well, they do, but they don't really do anything. It's just a washer. So maybe, how are we going to get that? <clears throat> so much cohesion somehow we got to get that to stay on there while we assemble everything yeah we got to get those things to line up somehow uh i think those are what does somebody say there's a clutch back in there third gear something like that which would make sense because it's high range and reverse it doesn't make sense to me but we're just taking stuff apart i think we're screwed at this point we're gonna have to take it somewhere or get a professional here which probably ain't gonna happen awesome well, wish me luck. All right, don't yell at me. I'm not an expert, but I did call somebody who I would call an expert. Corey at Automatic Transmission and Gear in Watertown, South Dakota. He said, yeah, you gotta get these clutches lined up to go on this, I believe this is the forward drum. So sure enough, these uh, clutches spun a little bit. So he says, you just gotta drop it in there and just keep spinning it, pushing it down until they all line up. Seems easy enough, right? And you'll know because this will drop in and engage in that in that drum. And we got to put some uh, assembly lube on this guy so that that don't drop out on us. And that's probably where it all kind of started because that's about the distance that it wouldn't drop in is those tanks. So it should be fun. Now to find the assembly lube where we lost it. When we move shops, because guess what? We're in a new shop. Go check out the video on uh, both shops on more Mort Ski Repair. And buy some merch so I can afford to rebuild the transmission after I screw this up. Link down below. See you in a bit. Then I got that thrust washer four tang DAO assembly lubed to the doohickey. Well, I guess there we go. One of them lined up. There's a second one, I think. Really nothing to grab to do this. My hands are all oily. I don't like the way it's sitting in there. I got it just about where we need it, but we're gonna get it just right. So I'm gonna slide it out straight very carefully. See how those clutches are lining up. So what I didn't like is I took went in there with a pick, and I feel like this washer should be tight against the drum, and tight against this high-low drum. And I pushed on it, and it dropped down just far enough that I it ain't all the way down. And sure enough, looks like there's three clutch packs. That third clutch pack is not lining up. So. See, we can't manipulate it a little bit closer. I don't know. You know anything about automatic transmissions, Mojo? Yeah. Do ya? Yeah, good enough to stay away from it. <laughs> what is your problem? Well, I'm not as smart as you, that's the problem. Oh no. Huh? So you dig into them then? No. Oh. I never have, but I took it apart to put this seal in. And now everything will go back together. Well, look at this. With the assistance of Mojo, we got her to drop in. So we just turned this shaft, held this stationary, which turns those inner splines. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we just got to drop everything else together. 
Sometimes you just gotta have two people. And a little bit of luber plate. Has anybody used a full tube of this? It's like silicone, it just lasts forever. Oh yeah, we gotta figure out how to get this BAM back in there. This should be fun. Fun with a capital F-U. They need to make magnets that stick to a little bit. Uh-oh. We gotta figure out how to get that back out of there. Yeah, we definitely need a different barrel for the next one. We got this thing all pressure washed up. Boy, I tell you what, cleaning out the bell housing is real fun because it all just kind of shoots back in your face. That's why I really love pressure washing, right Duff? Speaking of your face, you can't even see it. I don't know what it is with you sleeping underneath vehicles inside the shop now. So we're gonna slide our new torque converter in because it's been, I think, March 8th when I bought the new one. So it's past 90 days, so we can't send it back. So we might as well put it in there and then we get a hundred bucks back for the core. It was only like 118 bucks, so not too bad. Got our new seal in there. So then we'll be done up here. And back here, when I pressure washed it, it kind of tore up that gasket. So we discussed it with Mojo. Not Mojo. The Mojo. 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 He's not here. He went home for the day. He said, just clean that son of a biscuit up and smear some right stuff on it. So that's what we're going to do. That way, if it leaks, it's Mojo's fault. And then we'll put our extension housing on there, which is all cleaned up. Ooh, that's even a Ford part. And then we should be able to put this thing up in place and then we'll do other things. Hopefully it works. It's a 205. Yeah, just making sure. <laughs> That's what it says. It says it right there. You can tell by the way it is. You can tell that it's an Aspen 2 because of the way it is. Well, we're talking about 205s. This is where you, what are they, twin sticks? This is where you twin stick them. You take this balance bar off and you can get what? I think you get, basically you just get low range and two-wheel drive, I think is all you gain. Yeah, I don't know. Rock crawling stuff, I don't know much about it. Okay, here we go. Twin stick, now you know. It is hotter than two rats doing you know what in a wool sock in this place, but the show must go on. So we got our cooler lines hooked up. We got our starter in place and hooked up. We got our torque converter bolts tightened up. We got our inspection cover tightened up. I don't know why Ford thought that inspection cover bolt needed to be a 7 16 Like, couldn't it be just a little quarter inch bolt like GM did? No. Overkill. Shifter's hooked up. Kick down is still up top, so not hooked up. I don't even know where that hooks up to, but we're gonna have to, oh yeah, we're gonna have to take that apart and hook that back up. Anyway, kick down, we don't need no stinking kick down. All right, I think we're ready to put that transmission cross member in place, and then we'll put the uh, transfer case in place, and carry on with our lives, hopefully. Maybe, I don't know. Let's just try not to die when we unbolt this front end again and ratchet strap it back in place. Here we go.
All right, that miserable son of a biscuit of a crossmember is in. I mean, I get it, Ford. You got these silly trailing arms that you gotta tie together and beef everything up. So, I mean, it's, it's super rigid, but not very serviceable. I think they should give you more room to get the hardware on top or put encapsulated nuts or you know, have it bolt from the side or something. I don't know, it's not good. We still gotta put these bottom bolts in this mount here, but we're on the home stretch. Once we get that done, we got a couple of loose ends. We gotta put a vacuum hose down here, but I wanted to get that in place up there. We got the dipstick, the kick down, uh, a couple of top cross member bolts up there, hook the battery up, air cleaner, all that fun stuff, but we are on the home stretch. We get this in, transfer case, shift linkage, speedo, drive shafts, and we're getting there. We gotta remember to drain this thing. I should do that. Rake me out before I forget. Now what is so damn funny? Well, look at this, superior drain plug location. What do you suppose, is it gonna be full of water? We're we gonna get some uh, ETF right off the bat. Or is there gonna be nothing in there? Nothing. All right, well, let's go to guess. Slug that back up, hopefully she don't leak. And move on to the transmission mode. Transfer case. We're well, ready to write stuff, everything, and slam it together. All right, moment of truth. Got our silicone write stuff schmoo down there. Let's see if we can't get this. The thing about these transfer cases is they're just awkward. They don't fit on these. Uh, Jacks for real well, and they're heavy just a little. Definitely don't have the lights in the right spot. The wimpy little 208 is so much nicer. something in your neck lifting over your head? I think I just did. Oh, it slid onto the shaft. Oh my word. It's got about a quarter inch to go, a little more than that, three eighths. I'm not sure why. Looks like it's all lined up. Much, much, much later. I tell you what, what a miserable SOP it was getting that thing in there. And the top bolt, I absolutely cannot, I can barely get it started. We gotta pull the uh, inspection cover on the floor, which is fine. I need to run some speaker wires underneath the carpet anyway. So I'll have to peel up the carpet, take that inspection cover off the floor pan, get that top one. Ain't gonna happen now, like Puddin says, if five don't hold it, six never would have. We got our cross member or their mount bolted back in. We got our speedo cable hooked up. I think we're just, oh, we gotta hook up the shift linkage and then the drive shafts. And then we gotta go up top and finish a couple things up there. But I drained this. There wasn't hardly anything in it. Of course, I kind of had it upside down when I was moving it around. So that was all drained out. No water in that. But we got that topped out with 8090, the transfer case. And we're getting, getting close. But that, that thing was 
miserable it fought me and then there's like an aluminum housing whatever uh bearing retainer that just you can see it was galled up from the last time it went in so it's it's like an interference fit and it was a bugger 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 to get tightened up the whole way anyway let's uh get this thing wrapped up it's getting late tonight we're not gonna get her tonight but hopefully tomorrow we'll get to her go for an r-i-d-e i uh had to take a sandwich break i was sweating profusely out here getting there though we are getting there what do you think duff the drive lines are in now we just gotta go up top and do a couple things up there and then come back down here and wrap that stuff up we're on the home stretch just hopefully this son of a biscuit moves on its own after we opened up that transfusion we have no idea what we're doing just winging it story of my life you got any faith you think it'll go we're gonna go for a ride tomorrow oh yeah duff is confident he's like that thing slid together like you knew what you were doing fooled you okay i think we're gonna call it a night though just kidding we're not calling her a night i went up top i got the kick down hooked up i got the top two bell housing bolts in we got the dipstick in and I got the vacuum line for the vacuum modulator hooked up. I think that's what it's called. Also, we need a new one of those because a bunch of fluid came out of it. So I'm pretty sure that's shot. Now we're gonna adjust the intermediate band or the second gear band that we had to take off to get all that stuff apart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quarter inch torque wrench set to 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds. And we tighten that up to 120 inch pounds and then we back it off one and a half turns and then we set the jam nut. Pretty easy this way i mean we had it loose and i thought i got it pretty close to where it was but figured now's the time to adjust it it probably needed adjusted anyway i don't know what it does when it ain't adjusted if you know what it does when it's not adjusted comment down below all right let's do this so we got a 3 ace 12 point on there because it's a square nut or square bolt 10 foot pounds is not much and like I said, we go to 10 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds and then we back it off one and a half turns. There's our 10 foot pounds. So we're gonna back her off one and a half turns. All right, how are we gonna measure one and a half turns? There's a quarter, there's a half. Three quarter, one, one and a quarter, one and a half. Now we gotta tighten our jam nut up without messing with the adjustment on that set screw. So we're gonna hold this, take our 13 16 wrench, snug that up. We don't wanna let that band adjust your turn we just want to turn the freaking set screw this is like a monkey doing what do you know what to this is just come on Let's use the box end. Will that fit? Of course not. Where? Wait. Wait a minute. Oh, this is, there we go. And I think you torque this 35 to 45 foot bones. So snug. Click. Oh, there you go. That's how to adjust your intermediate band on a Ford C6 transmission. I'll let you know if it actually works. Oh, you probably got to take your kick down off to do it. Put our kick down together. I think we're done down here. We just got to go up top and add some fluid. Hell, oh, man, this will be a good feeling to have this thing done back on the road. Or take it to a transmission shop, whatever it is. That won't be such a good feeling. Now, what do you think? Coming down for the last time? Probably not. Just for S's and G's, I'm gonna check the shifter and make sure that's doing shifty things. Oh, we unadjusted it. So we need to put everything in park and readjust it, I think. Dang it. Yep, all right. No, oh, sorry, man. We ain't done yet. Okay, now. Oh, 
smash up my trim. Idiot. Now let's see if it does shifter things. Reverse, neutral drive, two, one. Perfect. First, second, drive, neutral, reverse, park. We're getting there, pal. We are getting there. Never mind that 60 Cadillac. Ooh, those fins, though. All right, now let's get our funnel buddy out and get our six gallons of ATF. Well, it doesn't take six gallons. Usually they take about three gallons, depending on if you drain the uh, radmeator transmission cooler thing or mobobber. So we're gonna put, we've got just about a gallon in that torque converter. So we're probably gonna dump another gallon and a half in and see where we're at. Maybe just another gallon of Dextron. Good news is if we overfill it, we got a drain plug we can pull. A little, little out. Well, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for tonight. It is after midnight. I'm gonna get washed up. I'm gonna do the nine to five thing tomorrow. So there's that. And also I don't wanna fire it up. I don't like getting everything warmed up and hot and cranked over and whatever before I leave for the night. Just leave the battery cable unhooked. We'll mess with it tomorrow. See what happens. Everything's gonna go splendidly. What is it? Plan? Plan for the worst, hope for the best? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hope for the best. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Well, new day. Let's see if this thing's gonna light off. Got her battery cable hooked back up, even cleaned it up a bit. Let's see if she starts. Bet it don't start as good as it did after sitting for the last three months. Uh oh, somebody heard me open the door. Here we go. I can't believe that thing pops off like that. And idles to boot. What a deal, though. What a deal. We're gonna check some fluids, then we'll go for an RID. If everything goes all right. I don't see any big puddles on the floor from last night, so that's good. I was laying in bed last night thinking, you know, I should have put a pan under there, because what happens if my drain plug leaks? Lowest spot, there's two gallons of ATF on the floor. Well, we backed her out the door, let her run for a bit. So it backed up and then it drove back in halfway under the hoist. So should be good, right? Who knows? Yeah, I know. All right, I think we'll check the fluid one more time and then maybe go for a rip, huh, pal? Just for a rip. Excited? Yeah. Well, Duff, can you see how it goes? Transmission kind of winds like a power steering pump that's low on fluid. Hope that doesn't mean transmission's low on fluid. Maybe it always did that. Ford things. The good news is there's no puddle on the floor where it was parked. does it when it's under pressure or load.
here still. Oh, I wonder if it's... So is that new torque converter done? It's getting pumped up? I don't know. I've never put a new torque converter in. I, I probably have in a new transmission. I've never put a new torque converter in a used transmission. This silly of a thing is that it seems like to do, but I wanted to put that new torque converter in because if that's what was leaking, I didn't want to have it all apart and then I have to wait a week for a torque converter. Can you hear it now? No, it's not doing it. Like that torque converter had to fill with wood. It sounded just like a whine of a power steering pump. I don't know if you guys can pick it up or not. That differential when you let off, feel that bang. That rear diff is shot. We need a new ring and pinion setup. So put that on the list of things to do on the uh, big board here. There wasn't a puddle on the floor. And I just moved it again now, so I mean, that's good. The steering feels like it's way off, but the wind is gustoing at about Mach four and a half out of the south. So that's probably why the steering wheel is canted 10 degrees to the left. This is literally the furthest I've driven on these tires. I mounted them up because I just had some rollers on here while I was swapping wheels with the Bronco. And I got a while there to get these wheels from the big bandit himself and to get some 33s because I always thought this thing could use a little bit more tire. I think a 32 would be perfect. A 33 is a bit much. I feel like once we start you know doing some straight up flexing you know on the rock piles and such. Oh my gosh the heat is still on from the last time we were on it. Definitely turn that on. Carpet. 
it up and uh, rub the speaker wire and blow the carpet. I just got them set up for the top right now. And then we'll pull that transmission cover and put that top transfer case below it. And this is like it. We're never going to put that back in. It's been probably rattled a while ago anyway. There's an ongoing list of things you just pick up. Things that need to be done. Maybe we should do that. What are you doing over there? Got you a plug in your nose or what? That's what you get for hanging your head out there. Yeah, I think we should go flex on this thing a little bit. See if those tires are there. Sound like fun though? Oh yeah, we gotta overhaul the drive shafts. That's gonna be mucho bucks. I don't have the capability to do that. Yeah, give us a shout if you uh, want to be a drive shaft sponsor. Hook us up with some either new drive shafts or new flip yokes on these ones so that they don't flop around. Like I said, that needs a ring and pinion in the back. Just a lot of play in that dip. I think it works the way it is, but a lot of just little piddly things that should be addressed. Works good enough for what we do, right, Dub? Good enough for the girls. We do it. Let's take it on some gravel. Let's see how these new tires go there. Those Coopers that were on here, I forget what they were. Discover ATs, AT3s, actually. Those things would pick up random rocks and just humdig them into the inner fenders, and it was.
like a, a little excited with the Greta ones. By few, I mean like literally three people. Two of them, I think, left, so there's just that one duel, you know, there that's all upset. We got, what, a week and a half till the 4th of July? We got the latest planting that, like, I have ever seen. There was guys planting corn. Like, they didn't get started until it was almost the deadline. And I think that corn might make knee high by the 4th of July. That's kind of the stadium that's been around for, I don't know how many generations. We got a good corn crop that's knee high by the 4th of July. I thought this year they're finally not going to make it. No way they're going to get knee high by the 4th of July. But, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's going to make it. Good. Oh, it was a really wet spring, and now it's starting to get hot, and then that corn likes that heat if it's got enough water, humidity, precipitation, condensation to just pull that out of the ground and that stuff. You can hear it growing during the day if the wind didn't blow, but it blows like mad every single day. But yeah, the corn has really surprised me, because I mean, it was like this just a couple weeks ago and now like I said it's almost to my to my knees I got not the longest legs but I got pretty pretty long legs it's, it's further up than it is on Duff's knee anyway I wonder what Pookie's got going on chasing cow in this close I doubt he's spraying in this wind not a chance Definitely chattery, taking off at first. About to give Corey a call again, pick his brain, see if he knows what I did. Hopefully I didn't smoke that clutch that I adjusted. Is that clutch? The band. Smoke that band. Well, other than that noise, seems like it's good. You just turn the radio off. Shouldn't be a problem. Fixed it. It's the lug nut. Fixed it. Josh, should we jump the railroad tracks? Hang on! Is that fun? Should we do it again? No? Okay. We won't. Yeah, let me know what you think. Should we keep these tires on here? Should we go to 32s? Should we put a lift kit in it so that we sure we got room for clearance? We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Or maybe we should just go flex on this thing and see if they rub. That's probably a better idea. We can try that. Bonsai area to the ditch. Oh man, they just re-chipped our road too, so can't wait for all the new windshields that we have to put in for driving on. Good times. Why do they do that? Why do they, they like put this tar down and they put all these little baby rocks on it? Speaking of that, these tires didn't really throw any, surprisingly. It's, it's just really big rocks in the middle, so we'll only get one once in a blue moon, but it'll be like the size of a softball. Speaking of that, I gotta go play softball this weekend. It's the McQuaid's tournament. We won it last year, so I'll have to let you know next week because we won it. It'd be kind of cool if we won it again. Where are we gonna go flex on this thing? We'll put it in the rhubarb. She's flexed out to the point where the left rear tire ain't on the ground, so. Tire ain't rubbing. Well, what do I know? I'm not an off roader. What if we steer it the other way when we get to the rock pile? Is Mojo out here watching us thinking, what the French is that guy doing? Driving around the yard, driving up in the rocks. I think we might be able to drive it. 
I'll let you know the first time it rubs. But so far, she seems good. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. Bonsai off the end of the rock stuff. Probably not a good idea. You're right, let's do it. those things don't rub they look like they're awful close I'm sure if we were to get real aggressive with her we could probably get them to rub what do you think Duff successful test drive yeah should go look for some birds some big birds not the babies gonna leave the babies alone well there you have it we got some new wheels and tires in the big orange furred and we got a transmission leak fixed i think maybe who knows and we verified that the tires don't rub just in normalish driving conditions so yeah this thing's back on the road hopefully we get some miles on it because i really like this pickup it's good i would sell it it's not going to be cheap we'll put a price down in the description it's a really good pickup and I'm not going to get rich on it and I really don't want to sell it so it is what it is but yeah let's figure out what we're going to work on next let me know what you think we should do oh we got to buff the paint that's what we're going to do at some point we're going to buff this paint out on this thing and we're going to do some other things like I said I got some parts on the shelf that we got to put in it we got to make a fuel tank so that everybody doesn't say your fuel cap's missing Thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Like, share, subscribe. Think about getting yourself some Mortski merch. Check out the other channel, More Mortski Repair. We got some uh, new behind the scenes videos going up. I just put one up there today, actually. We're gonna try to do Friday evenings, you know, Monday morning for the main channel, Friday evening for the other channel. Check them out. Let us know what you wanna see on that channel because we're a little bit more open there. We're a little bit more flexible. A little bit, not much. As always, remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as so long as you're having fun. Can't say automatic transmissions are fun. Alright, on to the next one.